Hey, everybody. How's it going? This is Rob Turley, your host of Down the Rabbit Hole podcast. Again, this is brought to you by White Rabbit Intel, where you can hyper-target your market and know who's going to be your next best customer before you reach out to them inside or outside your sales funnels. Super exciting stuff. Today, very excited. Also, this is the 50th episode of White Rabbit Intel, and I am proud to present Tony Peck, godfather of Instagram. That's what he's known as. He's the uh, founder of Why Not You Media. And it's an incredible company where they help businesses leverage Instagram and other social medias in order to make themselves known. So, Tony, please, if you can introduce yourself, I'd, I'd love it. Well, first off, Rob, thank you so much for having me here. Congrats on the 50th episode. Amazing that I get to be on this episode. I feel uh, feel very special. That's awesome. Congrats on 50 episodes. That's no small feat uh, for all you listening out there to be consistent enough to continue putting out podcasts. But uh, Rob nailed it. You know, I'm Tony Peck, godfather of Instagram, co-founder of Why Not You Media and Why Not Print. And like you mentioned, we own a social media marketing agency that helps different businesses, brands, and entrepreneurs get more attention on social to grow their business and make more money. Yeah, I love it. And so I'd like to ask, when you're working with these businesses, what is the one thing that they consistently do wrong? That's a great question. Um, There's definitely a few things that I see consistently across the board. Um, I don't know what I'm going to say the the worst thing is, but I I would say that by far the majority is they tell me, Tony, I've been doing social media and it hasn't worked for me. And then I ask them, well, John, what did you do? And they'll tell me, you know, I've been on Instagram for three months and I've posted six times and I've got no business. And I'll tell you, no shit. I don't know if I can curse on this podcast, but- No, no, you can curse all you want. It's uh, 95% of the episodes are labeled explicit. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Love it. (laughs) I'll keep my shirt (laughs) on. (laughs) <laughs> but um, listen, at the end of the day, they tell me they done social media when they haven't done anything besides post six times in three months and they expect to get business. And that's the biggest mistake I think a lot of these business owners make is they go into social media, not knowing what they're doing and expecting to get a result. And when they don't, they write social media off in entirety, which I think is a fatal flaw for so many business owners because then they just completely overlook it and never take advantage of the platform going forward. Yeah. And you know what? It's not just brick and mortar mom and pop shops that do that. There are plenty of B2B companies out there. I mean, there are enterprises out there oh, that yeah. almost write off social media where they do that, that standard one week or one per week or yep. weekly I, post yep. where it's just some nonsense bullshit that's mm-hmm. just overall talking about the services that they offer. And it's yep. just a shipwreck. So I'll sell, sell them. That's it. No brand, no, no personality, no value, no education, no, no flair to it. No on brand type of stuff, stock images. It's just, it's a disaster. What's the importance of having an image on social media as a company? So, of course, there are all the things about personal brand because personal brand is the new corporate branding. Uh, The corporate brand, what I like to say, is a mix of all of the different personalities of the company projected into one place with one mission, vision, and purpose. Mm -hmm. But what is the main objective of a corporate image? Um, Let's say you're you're selling something in the software space where you'd think that, oh, it's it's really just product marketing. Mm -hmm. What is the thing that you think should be accomplished by this company? People buy from people that they know, like, and trust. And now we, because of social media, all have an opportunity, despite being corporate entities nowadays, to be able to put out their personality, their employees, their culture. And when people get to see the behind the scenes of the people that are selling these different software products, and they get to learn about you and like you and really see you as an authority in your industry, it's going to convert more sales for you over time than just a sell, sell, sell. Here's a flyer of a product we offer. Here's a, pro- a flyer of a service we offer. It's not going to really convert as well as people assume it will. But when you put faces behind these corporations now to show these are the types of people they're going to be working with and buying from, that's how people really buy it. And that's the opportunity we have on social media to be able to put that out at scale. Yeah, and it's the experience of the buyer that's what's so important. And that's what people don't do. They're looking at it from their own perspective of, okay, what do we want to help people with? Well, no, no, that's not what it's about. It's about what do people want to come to you for help with? And I think that's overlooked in so many different occasions where it's it's almost not fair to the buyer, the way that this stuff is projected. What would you have to say about some of that, that, that uh, tension that happens where it, it kind of falls apart there? Yeah, no, I think you're completely right with it that it's just not – like you said, it just falls apart because it's a disconnect. There's a disconnect in the message that they're putting out there versus what they actually want to achieve from that message that they're putting out there. So I think these corporations, these businesses, these brands, they, they need to take one step backwards to get those two steps ahead. They're always looking at, just like you said, it's the bottom line to them of just being able to put something out. Whether it's what they think the audience will like, it's maybe not really be who they are. you got to be authentic if you're building a brand. I don't care if you're a large corporation or you're 
a very small mom and pop operation. Show the culture that you have. Show the culture that you're building. I don't care how big or small the business is. You have a culture. Even if it's a one-man operation, you have a culture. You have a brand. You got to put it out there. Yeah, and what would you say? So for businesses that need to figure this out because they don't have it figured out or they've never collected the data, what type of data do they need to collect? Or what type of, uh, I guess, deep dive would you take when getting started with something like this to learn mm -hmm. what the clients want, need, or what type of culture has been established around the product? First, really figuring out who is their customer. Okay, I think, you know, by just by having the business and if they have sales records, they'll be able to dive further into who are the people that have been purchasing already, right? You start there. Now you ask yourself, are these the people that you want to continue to pursue to purchase your product? Because the answer could be no. And then your whole marketing has to pivot around that becoming a no and trying to convert different type of target into your sales process. But the answer could be yes. And now you have to figure out why have they been buying from you to begin with? And then you dive into that vertical. Or like I said, conversely, if that answer is no, that that's not their target that they want to continue, how do you get to that next target? What do they want? And then you market down that vertical. So it, it really does take really sitting a step back and knowing the internals of the business, which a lot of businesses, believe it or not, don't know as well as we would assume they would. Yeah, right. So I'm in the business of analyzing people's clients, right? Understanding that. And we've worked with people where, you know, they sell to 86% marketing and advertising firms, because that's the best target they should be targeting. And they've been driving it for years and years. After analyzing the data and looking at all the little nuanced patterns in a deep learning program, we found that you should be targeting computer, uh, so computer software and IT and services companies. Well, we don't do business with them because sales consultants and tech people, but heads, you know, they, they don't get along. It's like, well, you should be targeting these people. Well, <laughs> Hold. They target mm -hmm. those people that broke every single monthly record they had since they started the company. And it's not always obvious or the people that you want to target are not the people who are going to buy. Correct. I think it comes down to, again, like you said, having an internal audit of the business and also having a realistic expectation. Like, what is the goal? Like, if the goal is to make more money, right? If they, that's the real conversation and you tell them this is the consumer that's going to buy and they say, mm, no, we're going to butt heads with them. Then you don't really want that goal then. <laughs> yeah, and you know, if you want the thing too, is, that, money, is money really the goal though? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, they have a goal. It's like, oh, we need to make money. Okay, the yes. money is the outcome. Mm -hmm. It's the outcome. The goal should drive the outcome. So often people don't have that aligned. If they're in it to make money, they're often missing the fact of what it is that's driving that revenue in the first place. Oh, uh, you hit the nail on the head 100%. I would play that as a, a little mini clip. That, that was fantastic. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, no, we can cut that one out. That'd be fine. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> of course, there'll be a lot of good stuff in here. So when, when you're starting to um, drive advertising uh, for these companies, not necessarily advertising, but more organic, uh, when you're using and leveraging hashtags, this is a huge gray area for people. They don't understand hashtags worth a damn. And I'm actually one of those people. Makes mm -hmm. no sense to me. I understand how hashtag people follow them. I understand that they're important to bring relevance to it and get the content placed where you want it to be placed um, mm -hmm. in those different sectors. Uh, but when you're creating a branded hashtag, what does that mean? And how is that actually relevant to the uh, content that's being posted? Listen, it's very dependent. And I do a lot of these talks. I'm in a lot of interviews. I, I speak around the country. And it's very difficult to tackle very general questions because, you know, what, what we do, my approach to our agency, it's extremely custom tailored to that specific brand or that business. So my answer would vary industry to industry, even furthermore, business to business within the same industry. But on a general level, what I can give, I would say to the majority of the people listening to this podcast, this audience, don't get so caught up in hashtags. I feel like people get that paralysis by analysis type of situation and they're just overwhelmed and they end up doing less because they just don't know what to do and they just feel like it's too much and they're doing the wrong thing right so if you're listening and you get like you said caught up on the hashtags i don't know what to do i don't know if it's the right thing don't fret when you do a post attach relevant hashtags to your post you can do five you can do 10 you can do 15 it doesn't matter it's not going to hurt you in a negative way the only thing hashtags can do is give you a positive result potentially right now as you said, if you're going to brand the hashtag to your specific business, the best way to go about, I would say there's two really good ways. One, every time you post, you put that hashtag up there. When we were building our business, why not you? Everything I posted, I would put, why not you? It was a front and center thing you saw to get the name out behind the brand, right? Now, secondly, if you're already an existing brand, but you want to brand a very specific hashtag for your brand, whether it's a motto or a catchphrase or a word, you want to somehow tie it into something that can get spread to your audience quickly, like wildfire. And one of the best ways to do so is through a giveaway. And your giveaway could include 
was part of the rules to participate to win the giveaway is you need to tag us in your story and use this hashtag. And now your hashtag, your message, it starts to spread like wildfire to your existing consumer base and the consumers that are following them. And that's probably the best way to do it in a short span. And in the long span, like I said, every time you put some piece of content out, whether it's a post, whether it's a story, you put that hashtag front and center so people can see it and they slowly start to assimilate that with your brand. Yeah, and I like what you said with the giveaway because you can start looking at who's posting with these hashtags. For example, if it's on Twitter, you can get twubs and then you can register a hashtag and you can see all the feed that comes in from that hashtag. Yep. For example, we have like hashtag AI for good, hashtag white rabbit intel. We have hashtag sales enablement. We actually own that one. It's a, yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, nobody bought it. What? Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. So, wow, that's, fantastic. that's surprising. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. When we saw it, we were like, are you kidding me? This isn't taken. <laughs> this is insane. That's so, great. Yeah, we caught the hell out of that, all the licensing to it. Uh, awesome. But point is, is that with the giveaways and everything on Instagram, super easy to track, follow yep. the hashtag, see everybody who's posting. It's literally a feed in every single social media. Then yeah. you can start doing a giveaway based off of that. You DM them. If they're responsive, yep. they win. If they're not that responsive, was... they don't win because then they're not an engaged piece of the audience. Exactly. Nailed it. What type of giveaways have you done in the past? And let's say this is like big business mm -hmm. or mid market business, and there's mm -hmm. not much they can give away. What would mm -hmm. something what would a giveaway entail where it would be worth people engaging with to get it? I think that's a fantastic question because I'm going to hit both sides of the spectrum right now. I've done giveaways with the Kardashians where we've given away $100,000 between cash and bags. And I've done giveaways with the local pastry shop for $200 gift card. Okay. So now if you're listening, we're going to get really tactile here. That's a hell the, of a spectrum, by the way. <laughs> hell of a spectrum. The, the biggest spectrum you can find, I, I'm on that spectrum when it comes to this type of stuff. And I think this is where you can get really tactile advice if you're a business owner listening. It doesn't matter how small your operation is. Okay. At the end of the day, people like free shit. doesn't matter what industry you're in. Now, what I've seen time and time again through giveaways, we've done so many with smaller businesses that they've given away gift cards to their product. It was not as successful as them running a giveaway with just straight cash. So no matter what business you're in, whatever cash you're able to afford to give away, and you can write it off as a marketing expense as well, which is a plus, give away in cash. Okay, by far, that's going to get you the most result because it's the most generalized audience you're going to be able to bring to you. Now, if you want to get really specific and you're like, I don't want anyone to come follow my page that has no interest in what I do. They just want to win money. Fine. I understand this, the situation, the conversation. Then that is where you give away a gift card specific to your services because we've done stuff with like salons, right? But my followers aren't going to be opting into a salon giveaway if you're giving away a gift card to Manny and Petty. I don't have a lot of female followers as much as I do male followers, right? So my demographic won't pick up as much. So if your understanding of if you do a giveaway and you're going to give away a specific gift card or incentive to your business product services, you're going to alienate a good amount of people. So it's going to get less reach. So if your goal is reach, I would do cash. If your goal is to get your brand out there a little further, keep it specific and give away something that you already have. Listen, there's a cigar lounge local to me. I think this is great, by the way. They have a membership option. It's $1,000 for the year. When you pay that $1,000, they then hand you a $1,000 gift card back to spend in the store. It's brilliant. It really is. I do it just for that. I don't even go to the lounge that much, but I know I'm going to spend at least $1,000 a year on cigars. So they're giving me, I'm paying them 1000 for the membership in, in money, cash, credit card, whatever it is. And then they give me $1,000 in-store credit. So that's like a way that I look at it as I'm a very, it's a very specific consumer type of thing though. So if you want to hit the consumer that you really want, then you go specific on what you're giving. If you want more reach, you want more eyes, you want to expand, cash. Yeah, and that makes sense. It's it's kind of interesting. We always suggest, well, my company, we always suggest that you want to get as specific as possible. They're looking to drive conversion, not visibility, not awareness, not any of that. Sure, they have objectives for that, but it's like, I want more customers. If you want more customers, that level of specificity is very important. If that's the goal, if you want to drive customers, you want to drive customers, period. Uh, now, when people are starting to get this higher level of specificity, what have you seen that has worked or what have you experienced that has worked when you're getting that specificity? We're not looking at numbers. We're looking at conversions only. What, what are the suggestions that you have for that? It's honestly, I'm big on expectations, right? So if they're really going to get really specific, they need to understand what is the reasonable cost per acquisition for that very specific lead or, or acquisition, the sale bottom line, right? That's an important question because sometimes it's so specific that it may cost so much that it may not be worth it at the end of the day for the return they're going to get on that investment. So it does come down to that business also knowing their numbers where I've had many conversations with many businesses that I would ask them, how much can you give away in acquisition costs? What is the lifetime value of the sale you're going to get? I have no idea. You need to find that out because I, can, I cannot tell you what we're going to do is beneficial to you if you don't know if the return's going to make sense or not. So I think that's a big thing with the businesses really finding out. And something else I want to say too, 
is I kind of want to challenge that thought that you said about only focusing on very specific. This is my logo for my company, Why Not You? And the way that I think about stuff, and this is how I built my brand personally, so this is why I think it does apply to specific cases. I went upside down triangle model. I got a really general audience. I got really, really known. And because I was so known on such a large level that was super general, not everyone's going to buy from me that, that knew me, I able to get really deep and tight and specific to a very localized area. Because now I'm the biggest account in the Westchester County. I'm not that biggest account in my industry in the country, but within Westchester County, because there's so many people that follow me on a national level, I'm so known in my local level. So I think there are cases that it does make sense. And like I said, I'm a personal brand, so this isn't going to apply to every single one. not going to apply to every single business. But in some situations, it's going to help drastically. I've seen this happen with pizzerias. I've seen this happen with diners. That they got so big because their food is crazy and they're making these mountains of you know, crazy concoctions that they got so big on a national level. Maybe they had a TV appearance and they have 200,000 followers. They're the biggest in the local area. So now you're going to attract the very specified au the audience that you need because it's not localized. So I also think of it that way, too, that you could go wide to then go deep. You don't always have to start deep every single time. That's, that is fantastic advice. That is fantastic advice. That's, that's one of the mistakes that we made is that we didn't actually drive the local. Is that we went um, highly specific in mm -hmm. different cities that Got were it. more major cities uh, that would be relevant to what it is that we do. But then it turns out it is very relevant wherever we go. And mm -hmm. we should have done it where we had deeper roots where we already exist, like yep. where, where the offices were, Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, uh, and then in Westchester, New York. You know, that's that's where we're at. And we should have taken that further. And we didn't. But no shoulda, coulda, wouldas. It's something that we're currently doing now. It's about being there, being seen, and being heard. And then they, people will naturally talk about you and spread it further themselves because word of mouth is still the most effective form of advertising. By far and wide. I live, I live by social media. I built this business by social media. And we still live and grow every day because of word of mouth. It's the craziest thing. It, it just It's an amplifier. I look at the, social media as an amplifier. It, it really is what it is. But at the end of the day, you're never going to be able to replace word of mouth referrals because people love people at the end of the day that's what people buy off of most businesses are run by people liking people that's exactly right people buy from people they like trust and relate to i love that you say that because i say it literally 50 times a day yeah that exactly fact. that's why we measure psychometrics how well can people resonate how well will people actually get together and build a relationship with one another even though it's for b2b a lot of people don't buy into the idea because they think ah no no this business buys from me or these businesses will buy from me and i target these accounts you got to stop doing that. You need yep. to target the people who work at those accounts because the yes. people in that business are buying from other people who just so happen to be a part of another business. That's what it is. That's what it comes down to. That's it. It's it's decisions. Concept. Now, when you say it's an amplifier, I want to pedal back to that for a second. Mm -hmm. I like that because a lot of people believe that don't know much about social media, that it's a magic bullet. Yes, you're right. I, I don't that. know how that has come across people's minds, but really it's about driving value and being relevant. Because social media is a relevance engine. All the way down to the algorithms that run it, it's a relevance engine. Yep. How do you use relevance to drive actual conversion as an amplifier? What can you do within that parameter to be able to actually get the result that they're looking for? Well, I think first, like you mentioned, people think social media is a magic pill, right? Magic bull, like you said, where they think just because it's online and it's faster to get seen by someone that means it's going to build your business or your brand faster than anything else. You know, sometimes people expect a return in the first month. But this is where I challenge that thought. It's if you're in business and you've been in business for 12 years and it's taken you nine to build your offline brand, then how the fuck can you sit there and expect it to take one month to build an online brand from you starting with zero, no profile, no presence, nothing. <laughs> And you think in a month you're going to have more business online than you do from offline after building for nine years and you've been in business for 12. I think, and this is why I tell people, you've been doing it for 12 years. It's taking you nine to build your offline brand. Will social media build your brand faster? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. But it still might take four and a half years. But guess what? That took half the fucking time it took you to build offline. So you saved half the time. But to them, oh, that's too long. It yeah. makes no sense to me. And that, that always baffles me. So I, I think it's really understanding. It's not a magic pill. It's a long-term game. But what you said about how do you actually spread the relevancy factor to actually help grow the business, it's you're staying front and center. It is no one's job, no one on this planet to wake up and remember. Sorry about that. Got a phone call. It is no one's job on this planet to remember who you are and what you do when they wake up in the morning. No one's getting out of bed. Oh, Tony, the social media, let me call him.
it's my job to stay front and center in front of my people that don't know me and to the people that already know me because you don't want to go sit at the Thanksgiving you don't want to go sit at the Thanksgiving dinner table and your Aunt Sally bought a house with another real estate agent because she forgot your real estate agent because you haven't posted on Facebook in a decade. That's one of the worst feelings you're going to have in your life. So it is your job to stay front and center to people that already know you, that warm audience, and to newer people day in and day. And that's the opportunity social media gives you. Every day, new people can see you. And you're constantly reminding the people that already know you, hey, don't forget to use me when you are going to be doing what I offer. And you don't have to say it every day. I, I almost never sell anything on my social media. You don't have to. If you just put out value about what it is you do, they know what you do. And when they're going to need it, they're going to use the person they think is the best in it because they're the most knowledgeable. And that's and building the trust. That's building the leadership in the space. That's that's building the continuous relationship that you want to build that's so important. Now, I, I know that you're a professional when it comes to using video or even just like live feed, video. And when it comes to uh, adding the stories, things like that, a lot of businesses who work in D2B see zero value in that. And I don't know why. It is such a powerful thing. And it's that constant reminder. I mean, video content is um, what it, it has 10 times the amount of consumption. Yep. It's crazy. It's I, I don't know if it's the actual stat. It's somewhere close to that. Uh, it's so but, uh, yeah, it, it's insane. Well, how can people use that to talk about either themselves, the company, the wins that their clients have had and everything to drive it? What, what are some of the, the best practices for using video for that type of content? Like short videos. Yeah. Be, listen. Doing it consistently and authentically. That's probably the two best pieces I can give you when it comes to video content. You can do it as simply as a selfie video just like this, talking about a specific topic in your industry. That's a completely okay. Or you want to get a little more professional, you can hire a company like us. We come in, we film for you. We put your name, your title. It, it zooms in and out as you talk. You can get all nice and, and fancy. But you don't have to. That's not a necessity to build your business. We do it for the companies that don't have the time to do it for themselves. But if you have the time to do it yourself, you're a smaller level business or you're newer to the game in the industry, then you should be doing this every single day, providing value, putting on education. It doesn't have to be fancy. It has to be value-driven and authentic because at the end of the day, the thing that I find that is best about video, people – get to feel your vibe and your energy through the camera. You know, I'm a high energy, you know, I, I move, you know, if this is too much for you, you're not gonna want to work with me, which is fine. Yeah, we're, we're both New Yorkers. There's a lot of movement with the speech. It's hundred yeah. percent. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, some people may not like that, but you're getting the opportunity to see, to know if you want to like it or not to continue moving forward. And some people are like, yo, I love this guy because of his high energy. And I, and I, I vibe with that. That's like how I am. So I'm going to attract those types of people to me. And that's what ends up happening. My tribe gets attracted because I'm putting out video content. So you get to see who I am before you actually get to meet me. You know, that's right. and, and, and people are going to start following you that have a similar personality or they have an attraction to your personality because a brand can't attract everybody. Correct. Now, th this is what pisses me off in the market about the idea behind TAM, total addressable market. Mm -hmm. the total addressable market is anybody living, breathing with a pulse and a soul that might buy your product for some reason. <laughs> yep. it, God fucking knows what <laughs> reason that they could buy it, but they could. Yep. They could. Like cool. I could buy like a, a like a tax audit service, but why the <laughs> hell would I use that? I'd use oh, my own taxes. But... So that, that's the thing. So <laughs> when they're doing that, it's kind of ridiculous because the targeting is so off. They think, oh, for valuation. I, I hard for you, Rob. Sorry to cut you. I think it's straight up for valuation because most startups, that's what they're focused on because they want to raise as much as possible. So once I say, hey, look at my applicant pool. This is my consumer base, my potential target. I think it's a crock of shit, like you said, honestly. It is a crock of shit, and it's all based on that. I don't know why, but that's the way the investors like it. Though so there's obtainable market. Your obtainable market, that, those are the people who you could acquire. But even yeah. still, that's not who you will do business with. Mm -hmm. but it's something that we specialize in, that we're, we're, we trademark this, or we're, we're working on it right now, is, is YAM, your addressable market. Who's going to do business with you like specifically? Action. Because mm -hmm. they align with your business's values. They align with your personality, your interests, your aspirations, uh, with your core values. And they align and resonate with the value that you have to provide and the mission that you're driving toward. That's the magic behind it. And with what you're talking about is exactly how you're going to find you're attracting the people who are most likely to do business with you by putting out your raw personality that way. The more genuine you are, the more you'll attract the people that you know will be interested in doing business with you. 1,000%. Hands down. I think drop the mic right there. That's uh... <laughs> well, my, I've got a floating mic, so it'd be hard to do. <laughs> no, that's awesome, though. And I think it's great. Just just that advice that you're giving uh, about just being in front of the camera every single day. I'm guilty of not doing that. I do it and then I stop and then I do it and then I stop when I do it. 
my the people who have visited my profile on social medias, it goes up by nearly seven X. Yeah. And absolutely. then I stopped doing it because I get too busy and I forget about it. I'll just do it later. I'll just do it later. If you, you do it consistently constant. every day, I've yeah. watched salespeople go from zero to hero. Yeah. Doing that. I mean, look at uh, like James Say with Sales Buckley. He's he has mm-hmm. himself to say with sales now. Look at uh Justin Michael. Look at um oh who else am I talking about here? Uh Marcus uh Marcus A. Chan. They have become so famous simply because they just pick up the phone and they talk into the mic. And they they just describe things about their experiences, not only their business experiences and giving value that way. They're get they're letting people get to know them. Like James Buckley, for example, mm-hmm. he's putting in videos about him starting to lose weight because he was overweight. He wants to get in shape, so he started putting some of that so they can get to know him and his life. Yeah. Where he's not spamming the entire feed with that stuff. Mm-hmm. He's putting in just enough so people can feel what it is that he's experiencing as a human being. You nailed it with what can a personal brand be doing that's not just business because i feel like everyone listening that's building a personal brand or wants to build a personal brand they think it must be business all the time that's not the case you need to show insight into who you are that's really where you're building the real brand you putting out the educational the valuable stuff that's people know what you do and that that you know your shit but people want to know who are you past that it's gonna get you so much more like me i love cigars i do cigar reviews i post them on my instagram feed Okay, then you'll see pictures of me and my sister. She's my why. She's the reason I do everything that I do and I work so hard. I want to show her we come from the, the same womb and this is what I can build, right? So you're going to see sprinkles of that because that's what inspires me. And then you're going to see the educational and the value stuff, right? So you want to sprinkle in a mix of all that. And then your story is your opportunity to show your day-to-day activities. If you like the gym, if you like wine, if you're going to eat a meal because you're vegan, show, like show all this type of stuff because now people get to learn about you. And you're going to attract others that like you and vibe with you already before even meeting you. And then guess what? When you meet them, they're going to bring up something that they saw about you already. Oh, Tony, I see you're a Yankee fan. And then boom, you start the conversation right off the rip and you just met that person. Because there's a level of rapport already because they've been following you and watching along on your journey and insight into who you are as an individual. Aside That's from- the magic of social media marketing is that people feel like they already know you. Yep. And they have never spoken to you a day in their life. Never. It's, it's That's a- the magic behind it. It's, it's an incredible thing. It's amazing. It really is. It's such a, like, I, social media has changed my life. Okay. Kid from the Bronx, you know, dad, a hardworking union guy all his life. I went to school to become an engineer and I never pursued that. Got into social media six years ago, been doing it full time now, going on year four. And it has completely changed my life. I've been flown all over the country to speak. I've been on TV. I've been in Forbes. I've been an entrepreneur. I've been in Market Watch. I've been, list goes fucking on. I'm a regular kid from the Bronx who just put my head down saw an opportunity on social media, and I showed my journey when I started. I had a full-time job working in construction as a project manager. As I was growing my personal brand on Instagram, showing I'm working in the day, at night I'm at the cigar lounge every single night, reading, learning, listening, networking, showing my growth to become myself as a business owner. And people got to see the journey. They got to see the come up. They got to see it being built. They got to see the hard days. They got to see the easy days. You got to be vulnerable if you really want success on social media as a personal brand. And if you're willing to do that, you're going to be able to build a real following. I get stopped in the street, Rob, by random fucking people that follow me on Instagram. It's the craziest fucking thing. I'll be out with my sister. People will be like, Tony, I follow you. Just yesterday, the fucking UPS man. I'm walking down to my house. He goes, Tony Pack? So I'm just thinking he's looking at a package. He comes over and hands me the mail. He goes, I was looking at the mail. I see your name. I'm like, holy shit, I fucking follow him. This is crazy. You imagine this? My fucking mailman. It, what? Like, what? I'm a regular guy. That's the opportunity and the power social media has. And people don't really understand how it's at our, it's literally at your fingertips. At the end of the day, if you put your work the your, the work in and your head down, you can become something without TV, without radio anymore. We have such amazing opportunity to become someone, become known, make an impact, make a difference, and let our voice be heard, all be, by using social media the right way and consistently. That's the biggest thing. You can't get discouraged if it's not working right away. I didn't make a dollar on Instagram for the first two years, two fucking years, not a dollar. Then my first year, I made thirty six for the whole year, thirty six dollars. You know, so it's like most people would have given up at that fucking point. I didn't. I saw there was something there. There was attention. It's bottom line. That's all it was at the time. I just had attention. Had a lot of followers. Didn't know what I was going to do with them. Didn't know what the fuck I could do with them. But I had attention. And that's the amazing thing social media gives you. It gives you the ability to build organic attention and build a community around yourself, around who you truly are. You said attention because there's a difference between attention and intention. When you get attention, attention you need to convert that into intention. Yep. And you need to monetize it. Because attention will never get you anything. So a lot of people, they do these awareness campaigns. They get a shitload of followers. And then what? what? Nothing. 
They just keep doing it over and over again, copy and paste the same process. They got a bunch of followers. They haven't made a cent. There's tons of influencers that have millions of followers. A lot of the people that we probably follow that we know that they don't make shit on social media. They don't make nothing from their audience because they don't, they don't know. They don't know how to, they don't know what to do. Like they're either too salesy and they sell nothing or they don't have to sell at all. So they end up selling nothing anyway. It's the craziest fucking thing. Or, or there's some sort of a uh, moral battle going on in their brain thinking I can't ask people for things because if I do that, that makes me look needy. Also as well as, yeah, bottom line, you're right. Yeah, it's a paradigm. And that's usually something that was from when you were a child, you got told that you're not, you, you know, it's, it's like a whole psychological thing. It's a whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's interesting to see how these things grow. I mean, there are plenty of uh, companies out there that don't leverage their social media that have a massive following where they're like going downhill. Yeah. Fast. Meanwhile, their content is followed like a cult following. Mm-hmm. Why aren't yeah, they if you're listening right now, it is faster to become forgotten than it is to actually become remembered and known. So if you're getting known and you're getting traction, it is so much easier to become forgotten if you let off the brake a little bit. Just a little bit. That's all it takes. Because then someone else is going to be hungrier. They're going to come in faster, harder, more enthusiasm, more consistently, whatever. They're going to come in and sweep you right right past you. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like, for example, with this podcast, this, this very podcast right now, um, I was getting way too busy. I missed an episode. Really. I do it weekly, which is like the least amount that you should that, be. Yeah, doing. I mean, you'll, you'll get traction. You'll get engagement with weekly, but it cannot be any less than that. Correct. Yep. Missed one episode release because it builds into people's habits. Yeah. When they listen to it, why they listen to it, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. One episode release resulted in an 86% listenership drop. Wow. I lost almost all my listeners wow. because I didn't release one drop. fucking episode. That's wild. Yeah, that, that's an amazing statistic. It really is. Holy shit. That's crazy. Yeah, it was either 86 or it was somewhere between 86, 88 percent. But it was like wow. pretty much nine tenths of the my majority. Day. Yeah. Scott. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. This goes to show that's how fast you can be forgotten. And if and you didn't do it for a month or months. two months, forget about it. You never four get them back to get back where I was. Yeah. Just from that one week, it took four months to recover. That's wild. It's not a good time. It's not a good no. time. That's why social media is so – it's so important to be consistent because yep. it is a habit-building thing. It's relevance. It's habitual. If you break the habit that the person has developed around your content and your message, they immediately would drop it because what they're thinking is, you know, this is not consistent to my lifestyle. Yep. When it's not, it's, I don't care if it's for B2B or if it's for B2C. Yeah. It doesn't matter. If it's not consistent to your lifestyle, do you want it in your life? No, you're going to get rid of it. It's just not going to be part of the flow. Think about it when people are dating or marriages. You know, boyfriend, girlfriend, or boyfriend, boyfriend, whatever the fuck you're in. Um, it just, it falls apart when you stop taking each other on dates. Yep. Like marriages, it falls apart when the communication is more, you know, spread apart. And then mm-hmm. they stop going on dates. It's the awesome. whole thing collapses because the consistency is not there. The yeah. habits are not there. And then the whole thing gets, you know, it, it's overturned. It flips right on its head. And then the whole thing just falls apart unless you do something real quick to fix it. How long is it going to take to fix that relationship versus how long it broke? Yeah, 100%. No, you're right. They can break so fast, but it takes so long to rebuild. That goes with brand. That goes with attention. That goes with relationship. It goes with everything. It really, it's so true. It really is. And social media, I think, amplifies that too. I know I said that before, but social media amplifies the speed at which something gets broken or forgotten about versus how quickly it can be picked. It takes time. Listen, you got to keep in mind, if you're on social media and people are giving you any, any ounce of attention, whether it's a like, whether it's a comment, they took time out of their fucking attention to engage with you. That's a fucking blessing because there are so many other people they can be engaging with that you better take that as really an appreciative moment. And I tell people this whole time that they come up to me, Tony, I have 6,000 followers. I'm only getting 52 likes. Would you feel comfortable speaking in front of a room of 52 people? I'll ask them and they say, fuck no. Well, why do you treat the 52 likes as nothing? They're real fucking people. If you treat all 52 as real people and DM every single one of them, I, you'll convert. You'll end up getting business from your small amount of likes. It's so, not just yeah. a link. It's a when, when you're saying comments, I generate most of my opportunities through comments. Comments on posts, whether it's my post or their post. I love that. And then other people who are involved in that post that I've never even met before. Yep. It screens the separation, you know? That's mm-hmm. the way that it works. And the, most of the opportunities that I get, it's just by putting in something that continues the conversation and the discussion or it teaches some, someone something new within a comment. Yeah. And then they reach out to me saying, hey, you're an expert. I need to figure out. I need to know what you know. Social media is meant to be social. If you're social, you'll win. That's yeah, bottom line. Not a one-way street. So many people treat it as a one-way street. If I just post all this shit, I'm going to get it. come to me. 
Why? Why are they going to come to you? You haven't done shit to them. You haven't fucking engaged with them at all. I still send out DMs every single day to connect with people. I have 370,000 followers on Verify. I still send out DMs every single day to people to connect. Fuck, you have 402 followers. You don't. You can't take the time out to build your audience and your community. There's no reason people are going to come find you out of nowhere. People have that mentality of, I'm just here, so people should come. If they eradicate that thinking and say, I'm here, there's others here, I have an opportunity to go find others versus when you used to cold call back in the day and you had a name on a list with a phone number. Now you have an Instagram name. You get photos of insight into their lives and who they are. You can send them a personalized DM. Hey, Tony, I see you're into cigars. I'm a big cigar smoker, too. I recommend you try this out, man. That's it. There's nothing to do with business. Nothing to do with business. That's personal. But now you build a relationship and it turns into business. And people miss that mark so often with the spam DMs of, hey, buy my shit, buy my shit, buy my shit. Oh, you got to love the one-hit pitch. That, yep, that's that's the most hilarious thing in the world. Why the hell are you sending me a message? I've never met you in my life. I don't know who you are. You've never interacted you, with me. Never you sent me a connection nothing. request on LinkedIn saying I've got this product. Yep. Those are the words. I hate the LinkedIn. I don't even look at my LinkedIn messages anymore. I've looked at them so long. I, I can't. It's just pure spam. The audacity of like, okay, imagine this. You walk into a bakery. You're waiting <laughs> in line. Someone walks up to you saying, yo, dude, I've got these awesome cashmere socks. You want to buy them? Yeah. You're either going to, one, punch the person in the face, <laughs> two, you're going to run away, or three, you're going to call the police. Yeah. <laughs> this person's literally batshit crazy. Yeah. That's not how the world works. You're, you're no. going to walk up to them and say, hey, how's it going? And then you're going to start getting to know them. You're going to ask a couple yes. questions. You know, you may, might tell a story about how you lost your sock in the dryer one time. Where did the socks go? I don't know. Probably somewhere in the ether, different dimension. <laughs> and then, you know, move into it and say, you know, I've actually got these socks right now. You, then move into it. You don't just strike. It's just like dating. You don't walk up to a girl and say, hey, let's make out. Yeah, you're right. 100%. That, that might work. One out of every thousand. It, yeah. it might. You don't know. <laughs> but, but then, that's not that's how it works. Then you got to really understand it's a numbers game for you then. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can do that by all means. You can shoot your load every single time you send a DM. Every single time you'd be a sales message. But just understand, as opposed to sending out 100 a day, you need to send like 1,000 a day. Because your conversion rates would be so much lower than the people that's that are. exactly right. So I, kept, I had my, so my head mathematician calculated this. You have more chances of playing the lottery. And winning some money, whether it's two dollars back, five dollars back, whatever else, you have more chances of winning money playing the lottery than you do with a success rate on pitching upon the connection request. Really? Yes, you have that's better wild. chances of winning a lottery number. That's wild. Yeah, that's insane. Well, for all the people that are just trying to go for the mass quantity of numbers, then just it might not even be well, all large numbers works. It's literally the, the function of nature. It's just how many will it take to get there? Are you willing to put the time in to get there? Most people aren't. Most people want quick yesterday. They want yesterday. Yeah, yeah. No, and I mean, they're, now they're automating it. Automated yep. messages have an engagement rate that is, like, atrocious it's, compared it's, to what a direct message it's is. It's abysmal. Yeah. Me you're better, I tell everyone this. You're better off spending the same time that you're going to spend to mass spam a 1,000 people. I'd rather you take the time to quality message 10 people. Because you might convert five of those fucking 10 versus the 1,000 spam ones. You're going to send you going to get nothing, potentially. Like yeah. and, then, and then how much brand damage did you create in that process? Yeah, that's another thing, too. People are going to block you, unfollow you, never write, they're going to write you off. They're never going to fucking respond to you, never going to engage with you. But if you go to someone's page, you like five of their pictures, you leave two relevant comments, you follow them, you shoot them a DM very personally, say, addressing them by their name, maybe asking them a question, or even commenting something positive about what you saw from their page, whether it's about their life or their business or their brand, you're going to make a real fucking connection. And if that's what your goal is, or if your goal is to grow your business, you really need to focus on connections and relationships. Not just spam, spam, spam. It's not going to do anything for you. You're going to get very discouraged very fast. Yeah. Yeah. There's a company that we're, we're about to work with, for example. They spend a quarter million dollars a year on Zoom Info. Wow. How do you even do that? I didn't even know you could. Yeah. That... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's, when, when I was told that, I was just like, yeah. Oh my f what, what happened? Yeah. What happened? I literally asked. I was like, what, what happened? I didn't know how to answer the question. But I, I, was, I don't know how, how. How did you get yourself into this situation? Zoom Info must fucking love you. you know? <laughs> My God, quarter million dollar contract on recycled data. That's wild. Oh my God, that's insanity. Yeah, that's I, these lead gen companies crack me up though. They bank on your failure because it's all about uh, quantity, quantity yep. of amount of data that that you keep buying and buying and buying, and so they're banking on you fucking up to make all their money. Yeah. And so they're there saying, oh, yeah, we're here to help you. We'll give you the best data, except nobody knows what the hell to do with it. So you just keep 
keep shoveling, keep shoveling the hole, take yourself deeper, keep going. And then, you know, it's just, it's like a game and it's just like, you know, the definition of insanity, you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result and you're getting the same result and it's getting worse for everybody because it's a cumulative issue. The more noise that goes out, the less anybody and everybody can hear each other. It's been a game. It's been, well, it's been a dick measuring contest, for lack of a better term, of high volume outreach. And when that happens, it's worse for everybody and it keeps getting worse and worse over time. The average amount of touches it takes to get someone's attention today is 18 touches. That's wild. 10 years ago, it was 12 to, it, no, sorry, it was seven to nine. Yep, 10 years go. before that, it was three to four. That's crazy. That's amazing to hear. Wow. We're going the wrong fucking way. That's- uh, because we're, because it's so overwhelmed with uh with information, it's information overload. How many emails do the regular consumer get a day? Not even a business, regular consumer. Yeah, I, I have a guy who's trying to buy from me right now. He hit me up on LinkedIn four times, and I didn't even see his message because he got buried so quick with all the other shit. Of course, it's all spam shit that comes in. He's trying like, to pay me, and I didn't even know he was trying to pay me. I don't even look at my LinkedIn messages. To me, it's such a waste. They're all spam. It's almost all spam. I'm sorry if there's people in there that are trying to connect with me. Connect with me on Instagram because LinkedIn ain't gonna do it for me. It's just too much spam. Yeah, that's funny though. You're getting less spam on Instagram than I LinkedIn. And on Instagram, but I get a lot of inbound on Instagram from like people, like in general. I get, you know, sometimes I get spam. Don't get me wrong, but LinkedIn's like all spam. At least it comes off as all spam because it's the same fucking message every single time from different people, you know? Hey, they're don't... using the same automation uh, company. That's it's the same, that's same. Yeah, it's the same shit. The, the message is all structured exactly the same. Hey, I got this product, blah, blah, blah. This try this, free trial, this, that, and the other. Let's get on a 30 minute call. Bro, what the fuck? How about you comment on something first? Or you engage with me a little bit for like, <laughs> you know, it's crazy to me. It's it's laughable. I, I like to be I commend them for trying before least, I get but fucked, right? I commend them for trying. But if they're complaining about not getting results, I don't feel bad for them whatsoever. Yeah, no, no. And that's it. Just just like I said, I like to be wine and dine before I get fucked. Yep, that's, exactly. That's the thing. <laughs> you know, you don't just go in for it like that. Yep, no, it's exactly. funny. So this will be, mo- we're going to be moving to the next stage here. Now, yep. one question, actually two questions. But first question is, if everybody were to forget everything that we just talked about today, what would be the one thing, the absolute one thing that you would tell them to walk away, apply to their business today that will get them results? To engage on social media. I think bottom line, that's my the most important piece of advice I can give anyone. Even if you don't have any content, you're not creating any content, but not putting any content out. If you were just on social media, engage. You will be able to generate business. I have a friend that has no posts on his Instagram. He has a bio that explains what he does as a real estate agent. He has a profile picture. And all he does is engage and send out DMs and he gets business. So engaging is, if I can give you one piece of advice, one thing to do, no matter what, engage, engage, engage. I mean, send out DMs, like people's pictures, leave real relevant comments and follow people. And usually yeah, not just, I, like this, I like this is not a comment. It's adding to the value of whatever it is that they're trying to provide. or provide. A real comment. Yeah, don't just leave an emoji. You know, you could, you're going to give them a little engagement. They're going to appreciate it. But if you really want to go deep, Leave a relevant comment. Like it could be a comment. You can be commenting on someone's a picture with their family. Beautiful family. You know, when they just have a first one. I remember when I had my son, beautiful moment. God bless. Congrats on your son, Luca. The fuck, how long does that take to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's it. Engage. Engage, 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 engage. You'll get business. You engage. If you engage authentically, you're going to get business. Yeah, I mean, and listen to it. If, if anything, listen to it from an influencer. Literally. Yep. I still do it. I still do it. And also, if you're listening, I didn't bring this up in the interview, but I, I got to hit on this one point because this frustrates me to no, no end. Answer every single comment you get. I don't care if you get three comments. I don't care if you get 216. I get hundreds of comments. I answer every single comment, and I go back on a monthly basis to all my past posts to see if anyone else has came to my page and commented on past posts. I've been to trying them. to get people to do this for so long. Answer every single comment. I don't care if they say, this is cool. Or, yeah, I don't hey, care if it's a spam comment. Answer I answer every comment. spam bot. If it's a bot that comments, I fucking comment right back. Yeah, it's same. engagement. It's more engagement. It shows that you care. It shows that you're active. It shows that you're there. You're present. You're front and center. Because That's the algorithms important. love when the author comments back. Yep, exactly. Yeah. You're doing yourself a disservice by not. And it doesn't yeah. take much time to do so. Yeah, like the average number of comments that I get on each of my posts. I only post like three times a week. How many comments do you get total? Uh, I usually get somewhere around 50, to 60. 50 yeah. to 60 on each post. How much time does that take you to fucking answer them? What, 20 minutes? That's it. 20 minutes a week. The fuck? It's not even saying it. It takes a lot of and time. That's the difference between getting what? Um, You get, oh, geez, what, 150 views of your post? And then uh, then that, that converts it to like 7,000. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get 14 likes, maybe. 
maybe 25, somewhere within that range. But then it's, I'm getting 50, 60 comments. It's amazing. That's what you want. You want comments. It's real engagement. You want the comments because that's where they took the time. They're so enveloped into the post that they don't even think about the like button. Yep. You got to reward going straight to the comment because they have to put their two cents in. And you got to reward them. You got to answer every single I don't care if you're listening, you only get two comments. Answer the comments. Even if it's your mom, answer the fucking comment. Like, answer them. Because when people come to your page, they're going to check it out. They're going to be like, this guy doesn't fucking answer. I'm not even going to DM him. He doesn't answer his fucking comments. And take it from me. Like I said, I, I have, I get a lot of comments. I get over hundreds of comments a post. I answer if every someone comment. says they follow my content and they talk about a post or something like that, it makes me wonder as the content curator. Why aren't they commenting? They're talking about my content. Yes. Which I, I still thank them and appreciate them, but mm -hmm. it, 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 it's kind of off when they talk about it that way. It doesn't feel genuine because they don't actually engage with it. Yeah, that, that is an interesting thought. No, you're right with that. Yeah, it makes me ask questions. It's like, what is this person actually in it for? Well, yeah, what, what's their intent behind it? 100%. Yeah, no, it's an interesting thing. Now, second question is, where can people find you? What's the best place to contact you and what website would be the best place for them to find you? Because this guy does incredible work. If anybody wants to work with him, I highly recommend it more than like anything. So thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. You guys can find me. Main place is Instagram. My Instagram handle is Tony Peck, T-O-N-Y-P-E-C underscore. I got the verified blue check at 370,000 followers. That is my profile. Follow me. And if you guys have any questions, shoot me a DM. It may take me a little time to get back to you, but I try to get back to every single person. If I don't see your message, I didn't read it. That means I have not opened it. So feel free. Fire away question after question. I'll get to it. And then website wise, why not you media? The letter Y, not you media.com. And check out our website. You shoot us an email. Or you can just DM me directly. And more than happy to have a conversation how we can help. Yeah, and he does get back to you. I can confirm this uh, because, you know, I've sent him messages and then a month later I get a response, but he's going to get to you. I, I get back to you. 100%. I do. I take, yeah. I take pride in that, man. I really do. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Why not you media? Fantastic company. And uh, again, this was sponsored by White Rabbit Intel, where you can know more, win more, and close often. Now, I'm Rob Turley, your host. I hope you enjoyed it, and hope everybody has a good night tonight. Thank you. If you enjoyed this episode, follow Down the Rabbit Hole podcast for new episodes weekly on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Pandora, and YouTube. If you'd like to apply to be featured on the podcast or recommend a featured guest, please feel free to email us at the team at whiterabbitintel.com.